Hi, my name's Victoria. Hi, my name's Luke. Welcome, Welcome to, to Breakfast, Breakfast at Nine. Nine. A place to be family. A place to make friends. A place, a place to, to explore faith. faith. This week's hashtags are Hashtag in the beginning. Hashtag darkness. And hashtag light. This, this week, week I, I can see, see clearly, clearly now. now. Good morning, everyone. I felt so embarrassed earlier in the week. You know the days are getting shorter at the moment and it gets dark quite early. Well, I thought it might be nice for all of us to graze up on the hills behind our field. So I took the whole flock up there and we enjoyed ourselves so much that we didn't notice it start getting dark. By the time someone said, hadn't we better get back? It was really quite dark. But I wasn't worried. I told everyone I knew a quick route back and that they should follow me. But the thing was, I couldn't find it in the dark and I got us all completely lost. By the time the sun came up again, we were a long way from our field and it took us ages to get back. Everyone was cold and hungry and they were all a bit fed up with me. Oh, how embarrassing! But, you know, it did make me think of this week's Bible reading, because in it, Jesus describes himself as the light of the world. And he says that whoever follows him will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. We were walking in darkness when we were trying to come back to our field and we ended up hopelessly lost. But when there is light you can see clearly, can't you? Hmm. When you follow Jesus you can see life clearly too. So, following him is a really, really great thing to do. Hmm. Listen to the reading today and Richard is going to talk about it afterwards. I'm very excited to hear what he is going to say. Well, enjoy the rest of Breakfast at Nine, won't you? John chapter 8 verse 12 Jesus the light of the world Jesus spoke to the Pharisees again I am the light of the world he said whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness the Pharisees said to him now you are testifying on your own behalf what you say proves nothing no, Jesus answered, even though I do testify on my own behalf, what I say is true because I know where I came from and where I'm going. You do not know where I came from or where I'm going. 
You make judgments in a purely human way. I pass judgment on no one. But if I were to do so, my judgment would be true, because I am not alone in this. The Father who sent me is with me. It is written in your law that when two witnesses agree, what they say is true. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me also testifies on my behalf. Where is your father? They ask him. They ask him. You know neither me nor my father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would, you would know my father also. Jesus said all of this he taught in the temple in the room where he was where the offering boxes were placed and no one arrested him because his hour had not come In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. I hope you didn't uh, feel the need to uh, adjust your screen there. What well, we see from this passage is that light is a big thing in the Bible. In fact, it is so big that God creates it first. The verses that we've just read have taken from the very beginning of the Bible, beginning at Genesis 1 verse 1. It all starts with light. Light is the very first thing that is created in the Bible. Before the animals, before the plants, before everything else, before us human beings, there has to be light. And it just doesn't stop at that. Light is a theme throughout the Bible. For example, in Exodus 13, the story of the people of Israel leaving slavery in Egypt and walking through the desert, we read, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. And further on, even in the prophets, in Zechariah 14 verse 7, when he talks about the day of Jesus' return to earth, he writes, It will be a unique day, a day only known to the Lord, with no distinction between day and night. When evening comes there will be light. So light is essential for life. And you'll all remember at school that experiment, I'm sure all of us did it, where we were given a plant and then the challenge to make it thrive in different environments and every time something was missing. Um, one point there was no soil and at one point there was no water and at one point there was no light. And the plant didn't do very well in any of those conditions, but especially it couldn't survive well without light. Light is essential for life. And it's almost as light and life go together. That's how important light is. And that's how important light is in the Bible. Now let's get back to our story. Where are we? Yeah, we are in at the Feast of Tabernacles. We're effectively carrying on the story from chapter 7 in John, where Jesus is in Jerusalem with his followers, his disciples, and it's the Feast of Tabernacles. And that feast was a Jewish festival, a Jewish celebration of that very exodus from Egypt, from the slavery in Egypt. And as we read just now in Exodus, 
the fact that God led them through the desert and at night there was a pillar of fire light, uh, lighting their way. So what does it mean for us to live in the light? Well, we walk in the light when we follow Jesus, when we follow him, when we trust him. We walk in the light when we believe all that Jesus claimed he was. When we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came down to earth to be with us and ultimately to die for us, to die in our place for our sins. Not like the Pharisees who continue, continue to question him and challenge the, uh, his testimony and the truthfulness of what he's saying. Walking in the light also means trusting Jesus in times when we find life hard. For example, during the current pandemic, maybe with problems in school, maybe we have a real tough decision to make. Walking in the light, trusting Jesus, means that we can expect help from him when we pray. That we can ask him to come into our lives and be that light that gives us direction and tell us where to walk. But it doesn't stop there. No, it gets even better. Because later on in the Bible, we read that we can become light ourselves. In Matthew 5.14, we hear that we are being told, you, that means you and me, us, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What an amazing thing. It's almost as if we get to share being part of that light that Jesus is to us, the light of the world, and that we get to share his light with others. By contrast, just look at the Pharisees in this story. They don't live in the light at all. No, they are still in total darkness. They don't see what's going on. They question Jesus yet again. They challenge his testimony. They just don't get it. And on top of that, they're judging everyone by their own rules, by what they believe is right. Contrast that with Jesus. What does Jesus say in verse 15? I judge no one. So it all comes down to this question. Do we live in the light? Do we trust Jesus' testimony for our lives? And ultimately, are we so enamored and excited by this light that Jesus is for us, that we start being the light to others? And the story of the light continues as we look forward to Christmas. Remember a lot of times at Christmas we are, we're lighting candles and the, the lighting of the candles symbolizes Jesus being the light of the world. So let us trust Jesus. Let us follow him. Let us walk in his light. And now let us pray our family prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honoured. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. Amen. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain!
marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. Living in the love of God, we are living in the love of God. We are living in the love of God. We are living in the love of God. We are living, living. We are living. Oh, we are living in the love of God. We are living, living. We are living. Oh.
now it's time for our family news. Share something good that has happened to you this week. How could someone encourage or bless you this week? What are you celebrating? A special occasion or perhaps a birthday? Praying for our family, we continue to ask for healing for Addy and all those who are unwell and for their families. We pray for everyone finding this lockdown difficult. We pray you will know the love of someone close caring for you and that you in turn can be a friend to another in need as you are able. May our loving God be closest of all to each of us. We pray God's protection and blessing over all our family and our community. We pray that the various measures in place will bring the desired results so that we might all, wherever we are, enjoy a safe Christmas with family and friends. We pray for a speedy development of a safe and effective vaccine. Amen. The thought for the week is, do you live in the light? The verse is John 8 verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Coming Coming next next week, the the Christmas story part one, the the first Asian. Do you have questions about God and life, meaning and purpose? Would you love to explore answers with new friends in a safe environment? Why not try Alpha Online? You can email alpha at freshsook.org to join the next course being run by this church. Friends are asking questions about God and life and faith and you'd love to invite them to join you in exploring answers from the Bible. Why not join Alpha Online? at alpha at freshbook.org It's okay to admit you're in over your head some days Yeah And now for a prayer of blessing To him who is able to keep you from falling and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence, to the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, might and authority from all ages past and now and forever and ever. Amen. Bye then! See you next week!
drought breaks with the tears of a mother A baby's cry is the sound of a love Come down, come down, Amen Thank you.